And we are playing on Crossfire, by the way. This should get interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, meine Damen und Herren, señores y señoras, welcome back to the semi-final number one. It is the third game between Hasu Ops and Goody. So, score is 1-1, Goody won the first, and in a very entertaining base race in the second one, Hasu Ops with this additional base was just able to take the second game on... Um, Zelnaga Kevins. Now we are here on Crossfire. And every time I see or hear the map Crossfire, there's only one thing which comes to my mind, which is saying Crossfire. I have no idea why. Maybe someone can tell me this. But every time I just have to say Crossfire, no freaking idea why. But it's just in my mind and it feels so good every time I say it. <laughs> so, um,. Goody in the bottom left, Purple Perrin, Hasu in the top right as the Red Protoss. Of course, let me tell you a little bit more about Crossfire. Here is the natural expansion. Of course, 8 mineral patches to Geysir, nothing special. And this is the most interesting part about the map, the center. Here we have a Zelnaga Watchtower, there is a Zelnaga Watchtower. So we got this area. Uh, this ramp directly leads towards the natural expansion. Of course, sieging up with tanks here might be a very smart thing to go for. Um, the same is can be done at the northern location here. But of course, Goody will most likely, if he's going to siege up here, because this is the base where Hasu is. Now, there, Hasu is already building his second pylon on a slightly sneaky position. And by the way, this is the natural expansion. If you want to expand once again, you basically got three choices, or four. Choice number one is not to get another expansion and go for a two base all in. <laughs> um, choice number two is to go for the bottom right, or the top left for the other player in the north. Um, just a normal base, nothing too fancy. Um, there is a one entrance here which directly leads to the main base. There's a second one. Uh, which leads to the natural expansion, and there's a third one, which leads to this expansion, which is the gold. Of course, the gold is here at the 4 o'clock and here at the 10 o'clock location, which is, by the way, uh, option number 3. Option number 4 would be this base, who's directly next to the natural expansion, but only uh, by air. And the good thing about this base, it is only having one single entrance. As soon as you can secure this entrance, it's uh, actually not too hard to defend this map and defend this base now. And our good friend Stivorinho just told us this Crossfire is a legendary Half-Life Deathmatch map and I absolutely have to agree with this. Half-Life Deathmatch is the... I'm talking Half-Life 1 of course is the most, absolutely most entertaining Deathmatch in all FPS games I played. I'm sorry, I'm not a super duper, super duper big fan of Quake when it comes to playing. I like watching Quake live and stuff, Quake 3 Arena, but Half Life Deathmatch on Crossfire is so, so much fun. Now, Goody is moving out, he's got a Hellion here, the Hellion is doing a little bit of damage to the Stalker and is actually going to take out the Stalker. Um, He's got some marines on the way as well, but looks like no, those marines pull back. The sentry is already waiting here. Just show yourself, Hellion, and I can go for the force field. But the Hellion actually is pulling back right now. And there's, um, let me just get back to this uh, Quake uh, Half Life dispute thing. There are games you just like to watch more than you like to play them more, and I'm just a Quake fan in terms of watching, but in terms of playing I'm more of a Half-Life fan. I uh, actually never played the multiplayer deathmatch of Half-Life 2, <laughs> even though the single player is quite nice. Now, oh, this 
Hellion will get in his house of pulling down the sentry right now because he knows, okay, the Hellion actually was able to take this right away. Now there's the stalker trying to do some more damage. Uh, the probes actually take right away, beating, and he needs to split up his probes, and he's doing this. Nice job. So he only lost one probe here, this is not too big of a deal. But there's the first attack moving out, and House Jobs realizing, oh, there are some Marines, and there's a Siege Tank, and there's a Medivac. So he just can attack this base here, and at the same time drop somewhere in the main base. But House Jobs now having those uh, two gates opened up, there's the third gate coming up. There we see the robotics base, so House Jobs going for the absolutely same build he did do uh, for the last game now there are 11 marines two scvs and a siege tank two more marines and an scv coming in house of realizing uh, might be a little bit too much of trouble nice game coming up by a goodie taking out the observer the nexus of course was forced to cancel on and there is no command center for goody so he is basically a little bit more all inish on one base and goody desperately uh uh, Hasu desperately needs to get out another unit and more units. There we have two more stalkers and an immortal out. Of course, the immortal helps out quite a lot against siege tanks and those bunkers. Of course, with the siege tanks on the low ground and the medivac providing some vision, the siege tanks actually can do quite some damage here to the sentries. But the siege mode still takes another 20 seconds here um, for goodies. So for the moment, House Ops is still safe and he can buy himself some time. And he definitely needs this time to get out this Colossus. This Colossus still takes another 20 seconds from now on. Um, the siege mode will be finished slightly sooner, but as soon as the Colossus is out and can help so much with all the Marines, House Ops should not be in too much of a bad position. But one thing Goody's intention regarding is, um, Goody's actually not trying to move up the ramp and win the game. He's just, oh, I built more bunkers and siege tanks and stuff. And um, at the same time, oh, warp in coming up because Goody wants to go for an expansion and he's got one siege tank here and seven marines and there are five zealots and two stalkers. And yes, Goody is still not attacking here, there he is building a missile turret, I'm still waiting. And he's again sending in a scouting stalker, and he knows about the siege tank, and looks like he wants to move in here from the back. There are the zealots moving in, and the zealots move in the range of the siege tank, and House Ops should do something, which is not what he's doing right now. But one thing at least he's doing, he's forcing some friendly fire now, he's trying to take out the siege tank, but they're on the high ground but with the second siege tank moving in and this will not happen very very soon now so he is pulling back and goody is already mining here at his natural expansion still he keeps up with this container house of is not building any immortals or something like this out of this robotics facility the immortals are actually quite good to move down here take some damage but with three bunkers up with 13 marines at the front of course those forces just get depleted pretty pretty fast so what is house Ops doing he's trying to buy himself some time with the stalkers trying to take out some scvs he took out two of those lost two probes himself as well earlier on so that's not that big of a deal now more siege tanks being built more scvs being built this bunker getting built as well and looks like house Ops is about to move in here uh, once again and um, i have a bad feeling in my stomach now the siege tanks focusing down on the stalkers instead of the zealots. Now the zealots here on the high ground got taken out once again. And this bad feeling I've got is that just imagine if House Ops would have all those 12, 13, 14 gateway units in his main base. He would have easily been able to take out all those forces. But instead he keeps on sending units in here at the natural expansion. And this allows Goody actually just to just be super much more cost effective we can see Hasu Ops is behind 875 resources now apparently he gave up on his plans to just warp in stuff over here he's warping in the stuff in his main base oh and he warps in some zealots on the low ground and looks like he's moving out there the guardian shield and there he is attacking the siege tanks right away with the immortal and with the zealots one bunker is already down rearranging his colossi not to take too much damage and looks like he was able to break this contain take out all the forces right away and there's only a couple of marines left this single siege tank and the missile turret the missile turret only attacking the colossus with a shield now all those units go 
down and let's take a look at the units lost once again. Hasu Ops is still behind 700 resources, so uh, all in all we can say it was an okay try to take out this container here for him. But he could have done this so much sooner. Of course, now he needs to attack. And he can go for a nice attack because his thermal lens already finished. Goody sending in a scouting SCV which got taken out right away. And now with his thermal lens colossi, of course, he can do quite some damage now. There's the siege tank. The siege tank barely does have the colossus in range. The Colossus needs to pull back just a few inches or centimeters, of course, wherever you live. And this is interesting how Suops deciding, okay, uh, he was mining for so much longer, I need to do something risky. He's going something risky by going for the gold. Of course, whoever wins this game is going to advance to the finals of the four players close combat cup tonight. Um, we have a total price pool of 200 euros, 125 for the first, 50 euros for the second, and a 25 euros for the third place. Now, here are the siege tanks. Continue to be sieged up. There is a Hellion, and this single Hellion, no blue flame finish just yet, still takes another 60 seconds. Mainly just got a m moved down here for scouting purposes, and he's Ready not spotting it. the pylon, he does have no idea about this. But the one thing he might be able to spot if there's actually going, if there's a gold expansion or not, but it looks like he's not expecting a gold um, to be there, so he decides, okay, top left it is. But he was spotting a probe, and now he's moving down here, and he spots the Nexus at the gold, so he knows what's up. He was attacking the Nexus once, so this also means that Hasu knows that that he knows, so because of that he can um, go for appropriate measures. And this is a very nice location by Goody um, to go for an expansion. So it looks like both guys going for interesting locations with their armies. Now here are a lot of Vikings. Nice force field by a house to block all those siege tanks so his stalkers can deal uh, with the Vikings. Now a couple of those siege tanks actually sieged up. This force field's now depleting, so Hasu needs to run away. Nice gun by Goody to see actually where are the forces of Hasu. Now he is attacking and taking out a lot of those Vikings. Now having his zealots at the front, he was able to take out some more forces, uh, some more of those siege tanks, but still the army of Goody continues to roll over here. And Hasu Ops is in a lot of trouble because this might actually just be too many siege tanks for Hasu to handle the Colossus and take just quite a lot of damage, the Vikings will just continue to do some damage and with the piling going down, Hasu Ops is not able to walk in any units and looks like Goody is going to take out Hasu Ops here. Um, and it's not like Goody won this game, I'm still thinking that more like Hasu Ops lost this game, he just wasted so many gateway units early on here at the natural expansion coming out of this pile. And just imagine having him this him having this unit in his main base. Now the blue flame hellion attack coming up here in the main base of Hasu Ops. He's losing more stuff. Blink coming up, but it is too late already because Goody killed so many probes already killed a total amount of 27 probes and just imagine if house ops would have had this gateway units early on here just to break the contain so much more faster but it was not doing this um, lost this nexus here at the gold got another one here in the top left coming up with uh, 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 this is over. Vikings and tanks without siege mode is everything Goody needs for the moment. Taking out another Colossus. And we can see the army supply of 55 against the 16. So this does mean Goody is in the finals for the 4 players close combat cup today. Hasu uh, so Ops will still, ha still have the chance to compete for 25 euros here. For the third place, they are the last units moving in. Um, Hasu so Ops directly focusing down the siege tank now the DT can do quite a little bit of damage of course taking um, and take a look at uh, how smart this is taking out this um, take lap here at the starport to prevent any ravens from coming up where this is over anyway because there are the siege tanks and once siege tanks are in your main you better type out and leave the game GG is called by House of Ops and Goody takes the series 2 to 1